Good morning, boys and girls. Uh, this is Antirin today. Welcome. I hope you had a lovely week. Last Sunday, Uncle Michael, with Uncle Michael, we looked at how Christians are different. We looked at the life of David and King Saul. Today, we'll continue to look at the life of David and the blessings which crowned his life in his middle years. And we too can experience the blessings in our lives. But before we do that, boys and girls, let's just uh, pray. Our God and our Father in heaven, we want to say thank you, O oh God, that we are here once again to listen to your word. We want to say thank you, O oh God, for the way you watched over us throughout the week. And that, Lord, you are there to protect and to watch over us. Father in heaven, even as we come this morning, this Sunday, to listen to your word, I pray that, Lord, you may speak even to the hearts of these children, that, Lord, they may know you and be able, O oh God, to put these words in their hearts. Father in heaven, I just want to pray that your presence, the Holy Spirit, may be with us even as we look into today's lesson. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, we are going to look at the time that makes a difference. We are going to look specifically, like I said, at the life of David. Now, boys and girls, I've got a question for you. Have you ever thought of what will happen to you later on in your life? David went through a lot. Remember, he was on the run from King Saul and was fighting many battles. In chapter 31 of First Samuel, we read of King Saul and his son Jonathan were killed. And we are also told that when David was told that King Saul and his sons are dead, he was sad. He did not rejoice at all. Instead, he felt real grief. People expected David to celebrate or even to rejoice, but that did not happen to David because Saul was after Jonathan and he went uh, after David, sorry, and he wanted to kill him. But when he had died, of course, people expected him to rejoice that his enemy has died. But instead, he felt real grief. David viewed Saul's death in the way the Lord views the death of every unbeliever or a person who is not sick who is not a Christian. He say, the Bible says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. David did not rush also towards his coronation or to be installed as king. Like many people do, politicians these days would put in wait. Whenever they win the elections, they would want immediately to be installed. But David first of all sought the Lord's guidance. He took his royal role only when the men of Judah anointed him as king. And thereafter, seven and a half years later, the tribes of Israel also acknowledged him as king. We, we, we read that in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. The Bible reads, Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and spoke, saying, Indeed, you, we are your bone and your flesh. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel out and brought them in. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel, and be ruler over Israel. Therefore all the elders of Israel came to the king at, at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron 
before the Lord. He, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he ruled over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 33 years over all Israel and Judah. Now, boys and girls, all true Christians believe that their lives are ruled and determined by God. They may have to wait patiently at times and what and follow what God has determined. And they know that it will certainly come to pass. But for a person who doesn't believe in God, their future depends upon their own wisdom and the success. So children, learn to seek the Lord in all things. Don't start paying somebody to do their homework for you or give somebody money to do the exams for you or even steal exam papers for you to do your exams or for you, for, for you to pass exams or even lying that you are sick so that you don't go to school just because you want to run away from that test or you are running away from your friends or the bullies at school so you pretend that you are sick so that you don't go or start stealing but asking God in all things in all the affairs of your life just like David he waited patiently and he trusted in God okay the second thing that David did he established Jerusalem as his capital Remember, we are looking at the life of David and how he moved and how he sought the Lord's guidance in all things. David drew together the families, all the tribes of Judah and Israel, who at, before that were busy fighting each other. They were involved in battles, but eh, David brought them together and he united them as one great nation. He then conquered and secured a city which was to be the seat of government and justice and a place of worship. He built wars, then he built a royal palace for that city. And on top of that, the Ark of the Lord was carried with great celebration to the place where David had prepared. Remember, the Ark of the Lord signified the presence of the Lord. It was taken away from Israel by their enemies. But David managed to bring back the Ark of the Lord. And the citizens of Jerusalem were indeed fortunate. They were protected and they had a very good king ruling over them. Remember, Jerusalem, or the city of David, has always stood as a picture of the heavenly Jerusalem, which is ruled by Jesus Christ. He rules in the hearts of people, those who have given their lives to him, those who believe that he died for them on the cross of Calvary, and those who have acknowledged that he is their savior and their king. Do you, boys and girls, have your citizenship in the kingdom of heaven? Do you enjoy the benefits of living under the rule of the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you look forward to the day when you'll be in the heavenly Jerusalem? Ask yourselves these questions. Am I part of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ? But there is a difference for those people who are, are citizens of this world and they are to be pitied. It is sad for them because they have no Jesus as their king and they are ruled by fellow men and women who don't protect them, who will mistreat them and they will perish at the end. It is important, boys and girls, that you have the Lord Jesus Christ as your ruler. The next thing David did is that he extended his kingdom. 
In 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 10, it says, So David went on and grew great, and the Lord of hosts was with him. You see, after prolonged, bitter military battles, fightings, the, the nations around him, David, these nations finally surrendered to David and his rule making his kingdom very rich and prosperous with everybody enjoying the benefits of his wise and just reign. Just as David fought battles, he had all these battles that he went through. Even a Christian has battles or conquests that have to be won. All Christians, all believers can win victories over their sins and the failures in their daily battle against temptations and against sin. With the Lord's help, they can win battles over pride, over greed, over dishonesty and unkindness, many sins. It's only God that can help you fight being selfish, lying, stealing. It's only God who can do that. And when you do that, when the Lord helps you win these battles, even your teachers, even people around you will be able to notice the difference that happens in the children who come to know the Lord. There's always a difference. And boys and girls, the next thing that happened to David is that he received great promises from the Lord. Whatever circumstances David was in, whether in the thick of battles, surrounded by enemies, or enjoying victory and success, he, will, he always expressed one wish. And it is found in Psalms chapter 27, verse 4. David says, One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Isn't that wonderful, boys and girls? Desiring to be in the house of the Lord all the days of your life. We see that when he brought the ark of the Lord to Jerusalem, he made careful arrangements of worship to the Lord. He provided the priests and what they are able to do. It was David's greatest desire to build a permanent home for the ark of the Lord. He wanted a beautiful temple, but the Lord declined and he said no. You are not going to do that. Instead, your son Solomon was going to build that temple for me. And it was at this time that the Lord made a far-reaching covenant or agreement with David. He told him that your house and your kingdom will be established before you, your throne shall be established forever. That is in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 16. The Lord made promise to David that his throne will be established forever. What did David do? David went and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord? What is my house that you have brought me this far? God had taken care of David, and God, David saw the promises that God had for him. Look, look, boys and girls, where David had come from, fighting, running from battles, and then now there is a palace, a royal palace. He had conquered kingdoms, and then the Lord even made a promise that he will establish his house and his kingdom forever. It meant that his family will continue to be on the throne forever. Children, 
God still makes similar great and eternal promises to all his true people. All Christians who acknowledge will acknowledge that they don't deserve to be, to be saved or to be chosen of the Lord. They have also sinned like everyone else. It's only the Lord who rescued and redeemed them through the Lord Jesus Christ who gave his life on the cross. So boys and girls, this morning I plead with you, seek the God of David who can change your life and your future. Listen to what David said to his son in First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9. The Bible says, As for you, my son Solomon, know the Lord of your father and save him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts, understands all the intent of of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. So, children, the Lord is calling you today to follow him. He will give you eternal life and you will live with him in the holy Jerusalem. But if you don't believe in God, your life is meaningless and you will be lost and you will perish. Then your life will be like this. You are born from birth, you go to school, you grow up, you get a job and get married. Thereafter, you retire. Then you grow old. After that, death and that will be the end of your life nothing else everyone is born they go to school they grow up they get a job they get married they retire they grow old and then they die and every day boys and girls what do we do you wake up go to school watch tv go to bed Wake up again. Life is just a circle. But when you have the Lord Jesus Christ, you will look forward to heaven and living with him in the holy Jerusalem. Boys and girls, think about it. And think about knowing the God of David. Look at how David, look at, the Lord looked after David and he became king and he took care of him and he promised that he will take care of him and will live with him forever. So boys and girls, I'm going to end here and it's my prayer that even as you look at life or what you want to be when you grow up, look at the God of David for guidance. He's going to help you and he's going to guide you and lead you in everything. Shall we pray? Our God and our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for today's lesson. We want to say thank you, O oh God, for what you did in the life of David. And it's my prayer, O oh God, that you may do the same, O oh God, even for these boys and girls, that they may know you, O oh God, and desire to live with you in the holy Jerusalem, that they may be able to follow you even as they lead, O oh God, this life under this side of eternity. Father in heaven, may you go before them and continue to speak to their hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.